Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace are yours this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Reverend Dr. Richard Perry was my ethics professor at seminary. He was also the director of the urban ministry program at LSTC, which meant that my first experience with Professor Perry was on the second day of new student orientation my first year when he facilitated Cultural Immersion Day. Now, Cultural Immersion Day occurred on like my fourth day living on the south side of Chicago. I had moved into seminary housing right before orientation started, unlike many of my classmates who'd been there all summer. Uh, but the way it worked uh, was this. The roughly 10 block by 8 block area surrounding the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago was divided up three by three, tic-tac-toe board style into nine sectors. And each uh, of us, the new students being oriented, were assigned a number, one through nine. And uh, we got together in a group with everyone of the same number, and we went to the sector of the same number and spent all morning and part of the afternoon immersing ourselves uh, in the culture of the area that we were assigned. At about 2 p.m. then, after doing this for quite some time, we came back to debrief. And when we gathered to debrief, Dr. Perry began by asking questions uh, of the sort that we were expecting to hear. What were your interactions like with people in the area where you were assigned? Uh, what sort of businesses were there on those blocks? How do people get around? Do they walk? Do they take the bus or the L? Do they drive? Is there parking? Uh, which is a rarity in Chicago. I remember at one point he just looked at us and said, well, what did you see? And I remember that he asked that question, not because I gave some particularly insightful response, but because I remember his follow-up question. After Dr. Perry asked, what did you see? And after we gave the sort of responses, I'm sure you could expect a bunch of seminarians on the second day of new student orientation to give. He looked us straight in the collective face and said, good. Now, what didn't you see? And we had no idea what to say. The answer that he was looking for, by the way, was banks. Professor Perry was uh, making a point about how people are kept in cycles of poverty uh, by inadequate access to financial <coughs> institutions, which is important, but not the point that I want to stick with today. Where I want us to hang out today is in that dumbfounded silence. What didn't you see, Professor Perry asked. And we all sat there slack-jawed. Because quite frankly, you don't see what you don't see. And keep that in mind. Because today, Jesus is going to give us a master class. You see, today in our story from St. Luke, we find Jesus at the home of Simon the Pharisee. And they recline at the table, laying on benches around the central table. This was the way that people ate in uh, the high society of this time. This is the place where people belong. One religious leader has asked another religious leader to eat with them. This is the place where ideas are exchanged, the place where peers converse. This is the proverbial smoke-filled room of its day. And that's what's going on here. Jesus shows up at Simon's place and takes the spot that's rightfully his. But someone else comes along. A certain woman, we're never given her name. In fact, we're never given any information about her except that she's a sinner. And here, as it so often does for St. Luke, sinner is probably best read as one of those people. 
So this certain woman hears that Jesus will be there and she shows up too. She brings an alabaster jar full of ointment and she stands behind Jesus, anointing his feet with ointment, washing them with her tears and drying them with her hair. Now, Simon the Pharisee sees what's happening. Everyone sees what's happening. They're all laying down and she's standing up. So he sees the anointing. He sees the washing. He sees the drying. There's something important that the Reverend Dr. Richard Perry would have nailed him for. What didn't you see, Simon? Well, Simon's thoughts give him away. He thinks if he were a prophet, Jesus would know what sort of woman he's associating with. He would know that she's one of those people. He would know that she's a sinner. But Jesus asks the right question. Simon, do you see this woman? He asks. And the answer is no. Simon sees Jesus' feet being washed. Simon sees them being dried. Simon sees Jesus being anointed. Simon sees a sinner standing behind Jesus. But Simon doesn't see her. Jesus does. Jesus sees her. Jesus sees who she is, not simply the outside of her, like I talked about the kids with that seashell in a box. And in seeing her, Jesus doesn't make light of her sin. In fact, Jesus reiterates the reality of her sin. We still don't know what it is, and our ignorance really doesn't matter because Jesus sees her for who she is and pronounces her forgiven. Baked into that forgiveness is reconciliation, restitution, is recognition. Now, Simon and everyone present at the table at this place of belonging is forced to recognize that this person whom they had dismissed belongs. And this is an image of the kingdom of God because this is what Jesus does. Jesus sees. Jesus sees us. When others see only labels, or actions, or sins. Jesus sees us and pronounces us forgiven. When you feel that you are nothing more than the worst thing that you have ever done, when you feel that you cannot drown out the voice of accusation, shame, and pain, when you feel that you are unworthy of inclusion, forgiveness, and love, Jesus sees you. Jesus pronounces that you are forgiven. Jesus pronounces that you are recognized. Jesus declares that you belong. When you find yourself in the place of this woman, reaching out to Jesus in faith, feeling unseen or unloved, Jesus sees you. Of course, we aren't always in the place of this woman. Sometimes we sit in Simon's seat. Sometimes it is we who look at others and see only the label. One need only glance around the headlines or the letters to the editor to see examples of people seeing labels and not the humanity of others. We've probably all done it at some point already today, and many of us haven't been awake for that long. When we recline on Simon's couch, we are reminded that Jesus sees those people whom we do not. Jesus sees them, and Jesus proclaims that they belong. Jesus reminds us of what St. Paul reminded the Assembly of Galatians in our first reading today, that while we may not be identical to one another, While labels might be applicable in the eyes of God, those labels don't matter for a hill of beans. 
Paul reminds the Galatians, and Jesus reminds us that there is no distinction, no cultural distinction, no earned distinction, no merit or worthiness or excellence or failure on our part that will affect our relationship with God. Our relationship with God is one of grace and love and justification. A relationship with God is a relationship set right, and it is true because Jesus sees us, pronounces us forgiven. Jesus, who has died and risen for us, who makes this relationship so. And this is radical good news. This is world-shaking stuff because this is not the way that we are programmed to expect that things operate. We are told that things happen to people who deserve them. We are told that people have certain status simply because of who they are. For instance, we are free because we are Americans. We are told that people have certain attributes because of who they are. I talk with my hands because of my Italian grandfather, you'd probably say. In other ways, we're taught that things happen to people who deserve them. But God chucks all that out the window and frees us to do the same. Jesus sees us. Jesus pronounces that we are forgiven when we stand in the place of the woman with the alabaster jar of ointment. And because Jesus sees us this way, we can see others in this way as well, even when we sit in Simon's seat. Jesus recognizes us. Jesus forgives us. And when we realize that, we realize what great love and compassion we have been shown, just as the debtor forgiven the great debt in the story that Jesus tells today. And when we are recognized by Jesus, we recognize others in turn, showing that same compassion, care, and love. The stories that we read from sacred scripture today give us that classic Lutheran formulation of God's word as law and gospel. We hear the convicting word of the law. Jesus asks us the same question that he asks Simon the Pharisee. Do you see this person? And we know that there are people whom we dismiss. As easily as Simon dismissed the woman at Jesus' feet. Yet in that same breath, we hear the voice of the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. The good news is that Jesus sees us. The good news is that Jesus recognizes and includes even the ones whom we omit. And that means that when we feel glossed over, excluded, and unloved, Jesus sees us and pronounces us forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.